Welcome to the Aero General Service Channel. I'm your host, Corey Bartolotti, and in today's video, we're going to be doing something a little different. We're going to take you down into a network of storm drains for a new housing development. Now, this housing development has probably only been around for, I would say, at least six months to a year, so it is relatively new. And what you're looking at here is the main detention pond for this entire housing development. This is where the network of storm drains drains into when it rains. Now, unlike a retention pond, a detention pond only holds water when it rains and it dries up after the rains are finished. A retention pond holds water all the time. Now, what you are looking at here is the main outfall to the entire storm drain network of this particular development. This is where it holds water, so we're gonna have to wade through this water. I'm six foot tall and I was able to walk through this concrete culvert pipe standing all the way up so that gives you an idea of the size of this pipe because the camera really doesn't do it justice so once we make it to the end of this pipe we brought a little step ladder with us because i already knew that the next level of concrete culvert pipes was going to be raised up about four feet due to the way the ground layout here is in this development so we're going to have to use that step ladder to climb into the next series of pipes now, during this entire expedition, we are going to be going through the main line of this storm drain network. So basically, this is the line that every other storm drain line connects into. This is the largest tunnel of them all. So every time we reach a junction point, is what I like to call them, is a concrete drain box. And it has access to a storm drain above the road. That is where you're going to see other various pipes connect in that feed other storm drains into the main line. All right, so we've reached our first storm drain box here. As you can see the slit at the top where the light is shining through. These are what are on the sides of the road that you drive past that the water travels down the gutter and it makes its way in to these boxes and that's where all the storm water and runoff goes into on heavy rains. Now we're going to continue down the main line and we're going to reach another storm drain box that leads to the surface as you can see and in this particular box there is another smaller diameter pipe that connects the storm drain from the opposite end of the road into the main line. That way the water on the opposite end of the road can get into the main line. And this pipe is a lot smaller in diameter than the main line that we're traveling through is. Now the other thing I wanna to mention too is this main line that we are currently traveling down actually got reduced in size. So we are no longer standing up and just walking through the culvert pipe. We are actually on our hands and knees and we're having to crawl through it. Uh, we have gloves and knee pads on uh, to make it a little bit more comfortable. But you can see there is a little bit of water in these storm drains because you know people's sprinklers are running, garden hoses, maybe somebody's washing their car, things of that nature. So that water all makes its way into the road, into the gutters, and eventually into the storm drains and it travels freely through here. Now, as we continue further and further into this main line, you will notice that each junction point that we get to, the concrete boxes start to get taller and taller and taller. And the reason for this is because we are actually going underneath a large, large hill that this housing development is built on. So as you travel through this main line, the main line has to keep the same pitch all the way through that way the water can travel through so that means when you're going through a hill as you go through the hill the hill goes up so you're going to be going it's going to be going deeper and deeper and deeper so that's why each box is a, is taller than the next box as we continue on as we get to each intersection, we go ahead and we take a little break and stretch our legs because we have to crawl through this main line. And at this box, at this particular one, you can see it is pretty tall. It's about 18 to 20 feet high. And at the top there, there's actually another storm drain culvert pipe that dumps into this one. 
that leads to the opposite end of the road that catches that specific storm drain. We made it about five to six blocks down the neighborhood, and then we decided to go ahead and turn back. Our hands and our knees were getting pretty tired at this point from all the crawling. So we continued to get footage, though, on the way back. That way we could get a few different angles, and you guys could see, get, you know, get a good view of everything that was down there. Now, another thing to note with these storm drain boxes is they actually come flat on the bottom. They do not come sloped with any type of concrete or anything like that in there. So these boxes, it just it literally comes as a cube. And when they install these boxes and they put the culvert pipes in, they go down in there and they, they perform what is called benching. And benching is when you take concrete and you form it in the direction that you want the water to flow and you make your slopes and your curves with that concrete. So then when it hardens, it allows all the water to be directed in the direction that the main line is flowing. All right, I just wanna go ahead and just issue a warning here. I do not condone just exploring storm drains for the fun of it. This was done for inspection purposes. You have to know what you're doing when you go down in these drains and it can be dangerous. You need to check the weather and make sure it's not going to rain. As you could see in the video that the skies were clear. We knew it wasn't gonna rain because we had checked the weather already days previously to doing this and the day of. So I just wanna make that clear. All right, so we've reached the main line outfall to this pipe that enters back into the detention pond ditch. And we're gonna have to wade back through this water to get out of here. And I just wanted to note that anything that gets dumped down these storm drains, trash, contaminants, uh, yard waste, chemicals, anything of that nature that goes into these storm drains, they it always ends up in some kind of natural uh, wetland environment either a swamp, a pond, a detention pond, a river, stream, you know, something natural. These storm drains always lead to something like that. So just keep that in mind because when we, when we exit this one, you can see all the trash that's ended up into this detention pond ditch. And it just, you know, it doesn't look good. It doesn't look very appealing to have all this trash down here. And this trash, you know, this is stuff that gets down into these storm drains. And when it rains, the water pushes this stuff through and it ends up in rivers, streams, lakes, you know, it ends up in the environment and that's not good. And the same can be said with chemicals. Like I said earlier, herbicides, herbicides, you know, chemicals for cleaning your car, bleach, chlorine for your pool, stuff like that. You know, make sure, try to be mindful when you're using these types of chemicals and, you know, don't overuse them. I'm not saying not to use them, just don't, you know, don't overuse them and be mindful of how you use them and where they're going to end up ultimately. Um, you know, everything that goes into these storm drains is going to go into nature and it's going to have an adverse effect, you know, fertilizer included. If you ever heard of like the algae blooms that we get in the oceans uh, or in, in ponds and stuff like that, that's due to excess fertilizer from agriculture use and from residential use. You know, if the lawn doesn't need to be fertilized because it's got good soil, you have good yard uh, growth and everything, then there's no need to fertilize it. And the other thing too is it is illegal to dump down a storm drain you know if you use a storm drain to dump you know your old oil from your car after you've changed the oil or antifreeze or something like that you know that's illegal to do you get caught doing that you know you're going to be looking at some trouble so just you know keep that in mind and don't be dumping stuff down the storm drains especially on purpose 
I hope you've enjoyed this video on our storm water drainage systems in our developed areas, and I hope you've learned a little something from it. And remember, we do a lot of drainage work in the Tampa Bay areas and surrounding counties. So if you're experiencing any kind of rainwater intrusion into your home or a soggy flooded yard, give us a call. I can come out there and assess the situation and design a system that fits your needs. And until next time, this is Aero General Services signing off.